Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Schrantz, and today I want to take a look at a very exciting, a very aggressive, outrageous opening that you can play as a surprise weapon against the French defense. And I'm talking, of course, about the Orthoschnapp Gambit, and we're just about to get into it. I'll explain what it is and why you should play it. I think it's an absolutely incredible way for white to play. It is a little bit dubious, but it has a huge practical advantage that it scores tremendously well for white. I've had a great experience playing it, and I really want to share it with you guys to encourage you guys to play it and see what your results are. I do have the high opinion that if an opening's working and it's winning, even if the computer doesn't like it, says it's minus one because you blunder upon, I think that you still want to play it if you keep winning with it. So with that logic in mind, I want to jump over to the board here after I kind of take a look, I'm also way up high. I'm in the corner. I don't know if how I like it up here in the right corner, but I'm going to stick up here for the rest of this lecture. And I also want to show you one more thing that I think is very important. For a lot of the people that have asked me how to study openings, I actually want to reveal the entire database as we go along. We may toggle the uh, engine on and off as we go through this one. But this is one of those openings that just doesn't have a lot of games in the master database. That is the games of players that are like 2200 plus or all the grandmaster games. There's not a whole lot of ortho schnapp gambit games. And on Lee Chess, if you're using their analysis board, you actually have the option. You can pick masters or Lee Chess. I'm gonna keep masters on just for a second so you can get an idea of exactly what I'm talking about here. So what is the ortho schnapp gambit? Well, after the moves e4, e6, French defense, uh, you don't actually see the move that I'm going to propose on this list. You need to scroll down just a little bit to find this interesting move c4. That's the start of our gambit here. And after d5, the most logical principled French move in the position, we are going to play c takes d5, which was the second most common move. And after e takes, we are going to ignore the main move and play instead this very interesting move Queen to b3, and the idea is after black captures, of course they can decline, but capturing here is the most principled and the most challenging line. White now plays bishop to c4, and we begin to get pressure on the f-pawn. And white's main idea here is to get the pieces out as fast as possible. The one obstacle to this is this e-pawn, so what we're probably going to do is we're going to follow it up in the near future with a move like d3 to remove this pawn. We're going to be just trying to develop our pieces as quickly as possible. Usually we get checked on the e-file, because perhaps Black is going to put a queen on the e-file. So usually the bishop ends up on e3, but very often uh, the knight here with a knight on c3, for example, you want to get a bishop here on f4. You can get pressure on this guy. There's a knight on f3. It can get pressure on f7. All sorts of very quick attacks are going to be possible for white, and we're going to be having a look at it. But if you just look for a second at the master database here, you'll notice there's only seven games, and at the highest level, you may recognize some of these names. These are some very strong players. I believe these are their actual FIDE ratings of these players, and it scores very well for black. And that's probably the real story. If you played long games against grandmasters, this might not be the weapon for you. However, if we make a change and we switch from the master's database over to the Lee Chess database, and we have ratings of players from 1600 plus on this website, and we count all of the games they could ever play. This is a totally different picture that you see here. You can see the white, that's how well white is scoring here. 59% win rate in the main line, 62%, queen d7 seems to be doing well for black. Uh, and then there's 71%, 74%, but you see a lot more white winning because I think in real life, in practical games, especially in blitz games, especially in games between lower rated players, it's going to be a lot easier to play the side with the initiative. And uh, I've already kind of gone ahead a little bit. I'm gonna take bullet out. Of course, if you wanted to do this for yourself, you could change it. You could just see basically, if you're a 2000 rated player, maybe you just wanted to know what it's like around your own rating. You can have bullet or not. Here's about what people would be scoring. So it's kind of interesting if you do want to mess around with it, just to get an idea of what people around your rating are doing and how it would score against people that you might actually be able to play. So with that all set, what this also does is it gives us way more than seven games. We now have a couple thousand games here, and that is going to make it possible for us to actually talk a little bit about the theory. And what we're going to consider theory for this lecture is what has been played on Lee Chess and what real humans are actually going to play against you. Now, 
This is a very uncomfortable threat, so I do want to look at the main line, which is queen to e7. This is where I want to start our adventure here. I think this is definitely a very principled way for black to play. And white is just hoping that our compensation will be based on the fact that we're going to be getting pieces out quickly. And if black never gets to castle because his queen is stuck on e7 and the bishop never gets out, this could definitely be in our favor. There is one reason to prefer queen to e7 over queen to d7, and that can be seen in the line with pawn to d3. Now this opens up this diagonal to the king. Black is probably going to want to toss in this check, because why not? Bishop to e3 to block the check. But now this gives black the option. You'll notice, yeah, knight to c6 is probably a very reasonable option. It's gonna kinda, kinda probably transpose to a lot of the other lines that we're gonna see. But we've given black this extra option of queen to b4, which is really not what white would like to see on the board. Because even though you might get some position like this, or maybe you should take with an A-pawn, get some dynamic pressure, but the queen trade really is in black's best interest. So what I would propose you do here as white is actually play this move knight to c3, which now shields us so that after we move our D-pawn, there's not going to be this check. For example, after knight to f6, once we play the move d3, you no longer can go here because now you've undefended the f7 square and queen to b4 wasn't check. So knight to c3, covering it up seems to make a lot of sense to me. And d3, sacking another pawn. This is our idea. After this pawn moves out of our way, we now have the opportunity to get our pieces out as quickly as possible. Bishop to e3 makes the most sense, developing a piece, getting out of check. And here black should choose between two different moves. The main move that I've ever seen is knight to c6. And another move that I think is actually interesting, but not as well explored by players with the black pieces, is this move pawn to d2 check. And this is actually more interesting than it might first appear, but uh, also it has, if you play this as black, one advantage is that apparently most people are crazy and they play king takes d2, which looks absolutely insane to me. In all these lines, whether there's a knight on f6 or there's a knight on c6, it's almost always a better idea to put the king on f1. Now, for example, after knight to c6, we can develop our knight. And <laughs> I've actually just spotted out of the corner of my eye that I've actually had this position. The only one that's managed to draw this. I do think this is one of the better ways for black to play. So uh, a big congratulations to me from two months ago, able to draw this. I don't know this game at all. Um, but you can see here, I turned on the computer just for a second. I think this is, this is Black playing reasonably well. A lot of opponents don't even make it this far, but Black really has one move here to potentially keep the advantage. And that's not what my opponent played. It's Bishop to D7. This though, I think will probably lead to some very interesting complications. A lot of the times White wants to take on B7, but only if the king is over on the king side. Usually, if you have a king over here, say you castled on the queen side earlier, it can be very dangerous to take this b-pawn, and we'll take a look at that in some future variations here. But after rook to b8, I assume we can take on c7. Queen to a6 might also be a big possibility after rook takes b2, something like this, where uh, we can kind of tell maybe white will have to be a little bit crafty. I do think in a practical game, this is not super easy to play as black. I do like white's chances. Black still needs to demonstrate how to get the king out in castle. And it's just gonna be easier for white to find a lot of good moves in a position like this. It's very easy for black to blunder. But obviously this is something you gotta watch out for. Uh, what actually happened in my game? My opponent played h6 and now I should play bishop takes d2, which seems very logical to open the e file, not, not just to take the pawn back, but to get maybe rook to e1 in seems to be the idea. I instead played rook to d1 and here I could have done the same exact idea with bishop takes d2 yet again probably to get this rook over to the other file i took back with my rook and sacrificed a piece very boldly sounds like me uh, this does seem like something i would do and here i missed an opportunity to win looks like i can grab this guy and maybe play queen to b7 forking the pieces also helps that maybe my queen is sneaking in here a little bit and i could have won this game instead we made a draw here in which Black was actually winning, but decided to repeat. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember that game at all. But uh, that's just an example of how this line might go. So that's kind of cool that I actually found myself in this line. But we will return. We're going to go back here. That's kind of what can happen if in our main position that occurs after bishop to e3, if they play the move. Uh, pawn to d2. So I'm going to promote this so that we don't have that problem again. The main move, though, the line that I see most commonly 
is the move knight to c6. So this is where a lot of our focus actually should be. This is what you're going to see on the board quite a bit. And I think here white actually makes a lot of mistakes in this opening. I think castling is actually a very bad move for white. And I think knight to f3 should be preferred. And let me illustrate it. So if you do castle, here's one of the problems. But first, let's just address the main move. Knight to a5, this is what most humans have played, but I think this is actually a big mistake for black. White can actually get out of this with queen to a4 check. This forces the knight to go back because there's no way to really block and save your knight. And after the knight goes back, we can simply develop our knight. And if black plays normal with a move like bishop to d7, there's actually a super killer move here for white, which is probably not so easy to see, but you're totally welcome to pause your video and see if you can find it for yourself. But the super strong move that white has available in this position is actually this very nice move, knight to b5, and you're ending up, you're putting a whole lot of pressure on c7 here. And it's not super easy to figure out how to deal with it. Uh, obviously, if you play a move like king to e8 or you put your queen back on d8, a lot of bad stuff is going to happen because white is very quick at getting stuff onto the e and d files in these kinds of lines. The best move according to the computer right now is bishop takes e6, and then white can already start taking this bishop. He can take back right here. He can simply bring in the pieces. And in any case, white already has a very strong attack against the black king that's not going to have an easy time deciding which way to castle in this position. So let's head back. Um, all that being said, I think in this position, knight to a5 is not the way to go. Uh, I again think that what black should be aiming for is something like bishop to d7. This is going to be one of the problem lines. The main problem here is that it's actually not possible to take on b7. The point is after rook to b8, uh, yeah, you can go here, you can take this. One problem if you do take this pawn is black already has a super killer move. And that's the move, queen to b4. And this is actually more problematic than it may look at first, because even after knight to b3, the big problem is the queen is super offside. Uh, a lot of black pieces surrounding the queen. And here, actually, bishop to d6 just straight up wins the queen. And it's for this reason that if you do castle, I think black just can play bishop to d7 and safely get castled. You're not going to be able to take this pawn. With that in mind, I would highly recommend that you play the move knight to f3 in this position. Knight to f3, exclam, and now we can see the top two moves for black are actually both quite bad. Again, if we have this move, it looks again like we can just play here. It's going to be very similar to the last game. And now in this position, white would be totally fine castling on the queen side, for example. Also heading back after knight to f3. Uh, I'll keep the engine on just so you guys can get kind of an idea of the evaluation. After the move bishop to d7, we can now in this position actually take on b7. After something like rook to b8, it's now safe enough to take this c pawn. And the idea is after rook takes b2, our king is actually very safe, so we should be able to just castle. And now white has a very safe king and still has a lot of opportunities to get a big massive attack in this position. So we will head back. I do believe castling is wrong. White should be trying to play the move knight to f3. And again, knight to a5 and bishop to d7, which are the most common moves, are probably not the best moves available for black. I will keep this on. You'll see, uh, and I've gone to quite a bit of a, a deeper depth here on this one, the only move at a certain depth that the computer will say is any good is this really surprising queen to d7, which looks kind of oddballish. Why would you do it? And it says this is the best way for black to get an advantage against this opening. And in real life, it just seems very impractical. Maybe if somebody is really booked up, uh, they'll find it. Apparently, it has happened one time on Lee Chess. But it's not a very practical move for black to find. And in a lot of these lines, white will have such a big attack. So if you're worried about somebody super booked up, you got to worry about moves like queen to d7 and all these weird nuanced defenses by black. But I think overall, it's going to be white that generally gets these massive attacks because it's not so easy, especially if you've never seen this before or you haven't actually spent any time learning how to defend these positions with black. You're going to want to be playing with the white pieces in these kinds of positions. Heading back to the top now, I do want to take a look at what might happen if black actually decides to decline the orthoschnapp gambit. So in a position like this, after queen to b3, the most common way I've seen in my own games of people declining the gambit is with this move knight to f6. This isn't particularly bad for black, and you will get kind of an interesting position. After you play the move e5, this seems to be the most logical way, asking the knight where to go, most players are going to end up putting the knight on e4. 
And here, white has to be really careful. Most games in the database actually illustrate a big mistake. Knight to c3 is a big blunder that largely goes unpunished by opponents with black. But in this position, black actually has a really sneaky threat. And the threat for black is just to play the move bishop to c5. And I do want to point out one cool trick that you guys may or may not know about. But if you have the engine on in these kinds of lines and you're wondering, like, if it was black's turn, what would black want to play here? You can hit the X button or you can even hit this little uh, crosshair up here at the top of the screen. This will indicate what black is actually threatening. This is very useful in a lot of positions when you want to know, well, what's going on here? What if it was my opponent's turn? What would they be doing? And bishop to c5 here is actually just a huge threat that needs to be on white's radar. And this is all made possible because the queen is on b3. Normally when the queen's on d1, if you ever play bishop to c5, you can hit him with d4 and this wouldn't make any sense for black. But here on d3, bishop to c5 is actually a huge threat because you can't play d4 as white. So most people are playing bishop to c3 and not getting punished by the immediate bishop to c5 where although you are able to take here, you will eventually notice that it's not gonna be super easy for white to get developed here. You really are cramped quite a bit. And there's no tactic here of winning this bishop because knight to e7 will defend the piece. So I think that's uh, an opportunity that most people should know about. And with that in mind, white needs to take some preventative measure against bishop to c5. So I'd recommend playing the move d4. And I've played around with this a little bit. Really, I think the only critical move here for black objectively is this move c5, where white can actually play a very interesting variation. And I just want to point out one variation just because it's, it's so interesting and I kind of want to get to know what you guys think of this one. Bishop to b5 check is an interesting move. After they block bishop to d7, you can recapture and ask black a question. Do you want to take with a knight and sack this pawn? Probably not. So if they take with the queen, you have this very interesting opportunity for white. And it probably is correct to play the move f3, trapping the knight on e4. But I don't think that's the end of the story, because now black can take on d4, and after you take back, they can get this monster pawn chain here, two pawns that somehow got past your e-pawn and are all in your face. Uh, and the computer will address this as being good for white, but I do not think this is incredibly easy to play whatsoever. Something like, you know, pieces will come out to some sort of normal squares. And yeah, maybe it's okay because you can play knight to c3 here. Uh, you know, it's going to be objectively probably fine for white, but not all that easy to play. I think when I looked at it a little bit deeper, it was like here and here. And it's like, yeah, this is good for white. But I don't know if you'd actually want to play this way. So there's obviously a lot more simpler ways of playing if they do decline. You can see it is actually a pretty decent for uh, for black. But yeah, you play d4, and I think c5 is the only critical move for black here. Otherwise, you just kind of get a normal game. c5 is not that big of a worry, but uh, it is something that maybe you should have a little bit of a look at if you get opponents that are frequently declining this gambit. Anyway, that was just a quick look at the Orthoschnapp Gambit. It's a really outrageous opening. I do want to know what your thoughts are. Are you guys brave enough to play the Orthoschnapp in all of your games? And if you have, let me know your results. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people are just racking up the points with white. So do let me know in the comments below. Hit a like. It helps me out a ton. Please subscribe to the channel if you want more opening videos just like this. And I will see you guys next time for another video.